This video is brought to you by Earmen, makers of portable audio hardware. Click the link in the description box below for more information. What are the greatest techno albums of all time? I asked myself this question a couple of weeks ago, mainly because when I talk about electronic music on this channel, I try and keep it palatable palatable for people who are not used to electronic music appearing in hi-fi or audiophile content. But I wanted to challenge myself so that I could share my favorite techno albums of all time with you. They stretch all the way back 20 years, 20 plus years. But I wanted to keep it tight in that I'm not going to talk about Aphex Twin or Boards of Canada or Square Pusher or Floating Points. So anything that has sort of ambient interludes in it or could be described as ambient was out because I wanted techno. So really music that is designed for the club but also works at home. So techno music that really sort of transcends its dance floor intent. I wanted music that was not only a sonic assault and that was also a little bit arty and that you could listen to outside the club, but also a continuous mix. So that eliminates any albums which are distinct tracks and only allows me to pick albums that start and then go all the way through to the end without a break. So that means obviously that gapless playback is essential, which we get from a CD, we get from some software playback apps, but not all, some network streaming configurations, but not all. So I'm gonna walk through 10 albums, 10 of my favorite techno albums, all one mix of all time, and we'll do it in chronological order. So I'll start with this bad boy. This is LSG's Black Album. This is made by a chap called Oliver Lieb, who's from Hamburg, I believe. I think he still lives there. Oliver Lieb made two albums as LSG, maybe three before he made this one. And the first two were very fast, but you'd also call them in the loosest sense, trance, but not like Ferry Corsten trance, like just very sort of electronic-y techno. Whereas I think maybe at the time, Oliver Lieb would have called this tech trance. So it's more techno and it starts with an ambient ramp up that lasts for about a minute and then once it gets going it just never lets go and it twists and turns it's great driving music and it is an absolute oral assault but what stops it from remaining too dry because techno that's just rhythms and a kick drum can sound very dry what Lieb did was kind of percolate some synth washes and sounds throughout this record and just when you think it can't go any further it goes further again and I was just telling Olaf off camera like I've got three copies of this because I'm panicked that <laughs> I, well, I couldn't find one the other day and then I had to buy another one and then that one didn't arrive so I bought another one so that tells you how much I love this album Oliver Lieb remastered it but when he read released it as the remaster he decided to just release all the tracks as separate entities so it's no longer a continuous mix and remember qualification for this list is a continuous mix so the lsg album was made in 98 this next one was made in 99 this is richie horton's dex fx and 909 so technically this is a richie horton album as him as a dj but with extra drum machinery and processing going on. I think this is where he really got into slicing up records and then just playing little snippets and then stitching them together. Actually live in a club, but then he made an album of that. Maybe it was a tour that he did in 99. Most techno aficionados know and love and swear by this album. This is like one of the gold standards of techno mix albums. It's mainly his work but it's also peppered with works from other people and I actually don't love this album as much as other people do I find it a little bit cold and a little bit alienating at times you can see there are many tracks on here and this is one continuous mix again 
as per the qualification for this list. So this is very muscular sounding record with a few synth washes and bleeps and bloops here and there, but generally it's mainly percussion. There is one killer moment in the middle where everything comes to a, a grinding halt and then there's this B-movie sample and it starts up again. And it's amazing. That moment, I live for that moment when I listen to the, this CD. From 2002, Speedy J is a loud boxer. Now, regular viewers of this channel will know I'm a big fan of Speedy J. His first two albums were very sort of melodic, ambient techno, very easy listening. And then he made two albums that were very, I guess, arty, angular, and at times a punishing listen. Although I still think Public Energy Number no. One is one of the greatest electronic music albums ever made. Once he'd done that and then a shocking hobby afterwards, Speedy J went back to making more straightforward club techno music and he released a series of EPs and then he mixed them, well, a lot of the tracks from those EPs onto Loud Boxer. What's interesting about this is it's, it's really split into two halves where there's this kind of um, vocal interlude in the middle. Now, the first half, there isn't really much sign of a kick drum or a 4-4. You know, four, four. It's mainly syncopated rhythms and it's the interplay between those syncopated rhythms, like mainly sort of, I guess you call them synthetic percussion. It's that interplay that gives the album its sort of sense of propulsion. And then after that interlude, then we get the kick drum and it really goes up several notches to a point where it peaks with a live cut that he mixed in complete with all the audience noise. So it comes out of nowhere and that is, yeah, that is the, the key moment for me in listening to Loud Boxer. Some people have drawn comparisons between this and the Richie Horton Dex FX 909. Personally, I prefer this one. It has a bit more personality and it has a better sense of, of groove, which techno, when done right, can have. I mean, this is why a lot of journalists tend to call techno at times future funk. When putting together this top 10 of techno albums of all time, I really, really wanted to include Maurizio's M-Series album. But I couldn't because it's not one continuous mix. Now, Maurizio was Mark Ernestus and Moritz von Oswald. And many people will know those guys as Basic Channel. Now, this is not a traditional basic channel album because there really wasn't one apart from the compilations BCD 1 and 2. However, this is Scion, so Pete and Renee, who were given permission to sort of cut up segments from the basic channel catalogue of EPs and 12 inches. Yeah, mainly 12 inches. And then rearrange them and layer them into separate tracks and then stitch all those together. And they did that using Ableton Live. And what we have here is actually a more club focused take on basic channel because there are lots of sort of more ambient or calmer moments in the basic channel catalog this is more i guess you'd call it dub techno than straightforward techno it's a bit of an easier listen than say the speedy j or the lsg or the richie horton i mentioned system seven in my recent Focal Stelia headphone review video. And this is the album I want to talk about. It's called Live Transmissions from 2006. Yes, it's a live album. No, the tracks are not distinctly cut. It, once it starts, it just keeps on going and going and going. And it's fairly pummeling. And it's probably the, the hardest sounding or the most techno album that System 7 have ever released. Now, System 7 are Maquette Garaldi and Steve Hillage, who many old timers from the UK will know as the main man behind the band Gong, who were this like a psychedelic, what, would you call it ambient music from the 1970s? Anyway, it was pretty out there. And I think he sort of slowly disappeared during the, the 80s. And then I think it was Alex Patterson of The Orb who kind of convinced him to come back and make ambient house music, which he started to do. But as Hillage made more and more System 7 albums, they got tougher and tougher sounding in terms of the sort of techno punch. And also they, they have a more of a sort of bounce to them than say the Loud Boxer album by Speedy J. 
Now the grumps, and there are many of them online, will tell you that techno and by association electronic music has no business in audiophile circles. I do not subscribe to that kind of gatekeeping. I think that's nonsense. The music you like is the music you like. The music I like is the music I like. And I'm using hi-fi gear to maximize the experience within the confines of the music I like. And I'll say it again for the people who don't watch every video that I make. I've got a whole wall of CDs over here that tell me that I listen to REM, David Bowie, Bjork, Peter Gabriel, Pet Shop Boys, Pixies, Robin Hitchcock, Lowe. So I don't just listen to electronic music. But this video is very much about that. Now, what does electronic music tell us about hi-fi gear? Not so much about tone and timbre or music's color, but it can tell us a lot about dynamics, microdynamics and especially macrodynamics. Now, many techno aficionados will know that techno itself slowed down during the noughties, during the 2000s, and begat what was probably the biggest trend in techno music at that time, minimal. Now, I was never really a big fan of minimal. There wasn't really enough going on. The 303s had generally been left behind. But there were a couple of albums I really liked, and this is one of them. This is Geyser's Blank Fade, which is not a DJ mix. It's all his own work, all stitched together as a continuous mix. But it's a bit more subdued and sedated than the albums that I've suggested so far. This is probably the one I would start with of this entire list of 10. It does take us on a journey because it is a continuous mix, but I think this is pretty easy going in terms of techno listening for, for newcomers. What isn't easy going is this fabric mix by Surgeon. Surgeon is probably one of the best techno producers in the world and has been really since the early 90s. This is a DJ mix, so it's not just his own work, but many, many releases by other people. You can hear the CD rattling around in here, and there's a metal case inside here. Many people complain that techno is monotonous. It all sounds the same. But you could say that about any genre of music because it pulls from a, a similar palette. And yeah, techno pulls from a, a palette of sounds. And really what I like about techno is that, yes, there's a lot going on, but it it's the subtleties that change at the edges. So as tracks change or as sounds come in and out, it forces us to focus on those subtle changes, all while being sort of propelled forward by a 4-4 rhythm or kick drum, or sometimes not, sometimes syncopated rhythms as well. There's a lot of those on here. This is a very drum focused album. I guess you'd call it that. Techno drum, there's no such thing. We can't talk about techno without mentioning Robert Hood. Now, many people point to his earlier work as the stuff that you should start with, but not all of it is continuously mixed. Besides, my favorite album of his is continuously mixed. It's Omega Alive, I think also from, not 2010, 2011. So this is like a different take on the album Omega he made a year before. If I try and tell you what the Detroit sound is, I'll just make a mockery of myself and of the music here. I guess talking about music is a little bit futile these days because Anybody can pick up a phone, punch in Spotify and listen for themselves, which I recommend you do with this because it is on Spotify. This is a punishing listen. But for me, I think it's you know, tremendously rewarding because, yeah, it is that oral assault that I look for. You know, the, the extremes. These, I mean, what I'm talking about here are the very extremities of my music taste. One of the more interesting techno producers for me of the last 10 years is Daniel Avery. Having said that, I didn't really like his debut album. I just found it, I don't know, there's something lacking. Whereas I love what came later. But between his first and second studio albums, he made a mix album, a DJ mix album for the DJ Kicks series. Which really, this is what really turned me on to Daniel Avery. This goes from ambient to ambulance over the course of its 70 minute runtime. It's a long album. It starts, yeah, very slowly and just builds and builds, but really insistently, but without ever like pummeling you. This is not a pummeling record. This is not like Robert Hood. It doesn't beat you over the head. It just takes you forward with that sort of sense of traveling without moving. 
So again, if you're a newcomer to techno, this is also another great one to start with. Perhaps the most techno sounding artist name is Planetary Assault Systems. And Planetary Assault Systems is the work of Luke Slater. Now Luke Slater has been around since the early 90s. He's had a really interesting career with electronic music because he made a couple of very ambient techno albums as The Seventh Plane in 93, 94. And then he cut over to making techno, but really fast techno. And then he sort of went back and pulled it back and tried to do sort of electronic songwriting, really. He had a guest vocalist for a while. And then he revived the Planetary Assault Systems moniker. But whatever happened, he, the techno he made from about 2008 until now is just fantastic. It's this really clean, crystalline sound. And many of his albums kind of flip between I won't even say like punishing, pummeling, sort of pile driver music, not at all. It has this kind of strong kick, but there's lots of really interesting electronic ticks and bleeps and bloops that move around it, and then it'll cut to an interlude and then come back. Those albums, like The Messenger and Archangel, which I love, didn't qualify for this video because they're not really continuous mixes. But what is, is his 2019 album, live at Cocoon Ibiza. And this really is an oral assault. This is probably the hardest sounding Planetary Assault Systems record that I know of. But what's, what's really cool about this is actually he throws in, well I'm throwing, there is a sax player who appears during some of the more interesting, I guess, ambient turns in this mix. Or where, where the kick drum falls away, the sax comes in to flesh it out with some different colour. On paper, I think that sounds terrible, but it isn't really. It, it, it works because there's so much other stuff going on. You don't really notice there's a saxophone player sort of making discordant sounds over what is essentially techno music. So this is from 2019. So yeah, we've gone all the way from 1998 and LSG to 2019, so that's 21 years. Um, yeah, with Luke Slater's Planetary Assault Systems. A great record. Not really a beginner's record, not really a kind of newcomer techno record, but still interesting nonetheless. This one didn't make it, and I, I tried hard to think how I could include this and just keep it at 10, but I couldn't. There's, I just couldn't get rid of another album, so I'm just tacking this on as a bonus choice. This is Stuart Walker's Live Extracts, which is on streaming services, a live show from the mid-noughties. It does lean towards the sort of geyser end of minimal, Super interesting record, not very well known. I think Stuart Walker is probably more popular in Germany, but I discovered this when I was living in Australia. So this sort of treads the middle ground between say the Robert Hood Omega Alive and the, the Geyser Blank Fade album. And that's, I guess that's the point really, is that techno isn't just always doof, 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 because the really fast, insane, even like Gabba, I hate it or those kind of, what are those Thunderdome CDs from the, the mid noughties from, from the Netherlands? Anything over sort of like 135 and I'm out. It needs to have sort of like this, I want, I, yeah, I, IDM, right? Intelligence Dance Music, that was a label that was flung around a lot during the late 90s, early noughties. I was really into what was then called IDM, so like Prome and Proswell and people like that. But I like techno that has the sort of, I don't want to call it like an intelligent element, but it works the brain as much as it works the body. It is interesting to listen to like when you're walking around the city or even when you're sat at home. And yes, some of it is if it's quite extreme sounding. Uh, yeah, I guess I like that feeling of traveling without moving that techno gives you. But it's not everybody's cup of tea. I know that. And I can imagine a lot of the diehard audiophiles watching this channel will be like, what the f <gasps> is this guy on? So if you like this video, Please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards techno, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.